before I get my kitchen back. Who has it, Charlie? Chip and Polly, that's who's got it. They started housekeeping on my kitchen table with that stupid homework. I can think of worse crimes, can't you, Uncle Charlie? Sure, but didn't they ever hear of the public library? Well, we thought we'd go out for a while and air out our heads. I'm sure Charlie will appreciate it. See you later. I'll see you. Bye. Bye. As far as I'm concerned, Chip is a wrung out duck. <laughs> Undoubtedly, something you picked up in Kowloon. Right. And if you ask me, she's more of a wrung out duck than he is. I think Charlie's more right than he thinks he is. About what? Well, I have a feeling those two wrung out ducks are very close to flying away for the winter. Well, darling, uh, it's still a long time till winter. <laughs> Barbara, take a look at that shaft. Do you think it's straight? Crooked as a corkscrew. Really? No. Well, why don't you go out and buy that new set of irons anyway? <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? What? Well, that a rotten thing like homework brought us together? Well, then it isn't so rotten. Chip Douglas. That's the most romantic thing you've ever said to me. Is it? Yeah, you know, I know you're not the talking type, Chip, with a big line, and I accept that. Someday when we're married, I'll appreciate how honest you are. Well, don't you accept it now? Sure. But a girl likes to hear gooey things about how pretty she is, how her hair shines in the moonlight, how the boy can't wait till he sees her. I can't say that kind of stuff now. Why not? Why? Because she told me to say it. I'd be like a parrot or something. Okay. Only someday when I haven't told you to say it, say it. We'll see. You're such a warm person, Chip. Chip, isn't that the same car? Yeah, I recognize the guy. That's the third time we've seen him. He parked near us when we went to the market for Uncle Charlie, and he was waiting outside campus when you picked me up from the chem lab. I wonder what he's doing up here. You know what I think? I think he's following us. I sure are staying out in the open for somebody who's following us. I don't care. He's following us. I'm scared. Oh, we don't know the guy's following us. Well, let's go back to your house and see. Okay. Hey, Chip, we just got our pictures back. Dad, a guy's following us. Following you? Are you sure? We're sure, Mr. Douglas. He's driving a convertible. Hey, the kid's right, Steve. I'll get a baseball bat and we'll grab him. Well, now, wait a minute, Chuck. Chip, how long has this been going on? We don't know, but we've seen him three times. And tonight, when we parked uh, someplace, he <laughs> followed us home. We better find out what's happening, don't you, Chuck? Yeah. Well, don't you think it might be better if we call the police? I don't know, Barbara. I'll Apparently get back. I say yes. Yeah. Hello. Are you uh, waiting for somebody? I mean, uh, why are you parked out here this time of night? Any law against that? Come on, don't get smart, Alice. I understand you've been following this young man and his girlfriend. Is that true? Yeah, I've been hired. I've been following him for a week. Man, a week? Why? Who hired you? Well, I'm not at liberty to divulge that. Here's my operator's badge. I'm a private investigator. If you don't tell us who hired you, I'm afraid we're going to have to call the police. Look, in my job, I could lose my license for telling. But let me tell you this. It's nothing to worry about. No gamblers, no hoods, nothing like that. Why would you possibly want to follow two college kids around? Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm taking myself off the case right now, OK? It's the last you see to me, young man. Well, if we see you again, we'll call the police. Is that clear? But we may work you over a little bit first. <laughs> Goodbye, gentlemen. Well, 
he was a private investigator. Yeah, we, uh, we got all the information we could. Yeah, but Steve wouldn't let me work him over. Oh, I forgot the bat. What was it? A private eye or something. Nothing to worry about, Polly. He took himself off the case. What case? Somebody was having you follow, Polly. Anyway, it's all over. I better take you home. She gets scared real easy. How would anybody want to have us followed? Well, maybe somebody's idea of a joke. Good night. Good night, kids. Bye. If that guy comes back, I'll hit him for extra bases. <laughs> so now that they're gone, Dad, what do you think that was all about? It's a good question, Rob. Huh? You're watching Furtive and Show all night long, so stay tuned. Mother's not following us. I couldn't sleep last night. It's nothing to be scared about. I wasn't scared so much. I was thinking about how you took over. How you protected me. Told your parents you'd better get me home. That's better than all the pretty speeches in the world. Yeah. Well, I'd just hate for you to be frightened. You do? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I just hate it. I'll tell you why. Because you don't want anybody to hurt me. You feel protected. You know something, Chip? What? I think you love me. I think you're right. But Dad, what would you say if Polly and I eloped, sort of? Eloped? Well, Chip, uh, for one thing, you don't elope, sort of. And uh, for another thing, uh, it's not really an elopement if you tell the parents. And, well, you've just told me. Yeah, but we can't tell her folks. Her dad would go up and smoke or croak or have me arrested or something. And I don't know how her mother would act. But, Chip, uh, an elopement is a very sudden thing. Sometimes it's so sudden that the people involved haven't really thought the whole thing out. We've thought it out pretty well, Dad. I've saved up some money from my after-school and summer jobs, and oh, Polly has some government bonds. But not really enough to start two lives on, Chip. Yeah, but they have this deal over at school. We're married couples live in a dorm, and it's real cheap. Of course, you know, 18 is very young to get married. Well, sure. Chip, uh, wouldn't Polly rather have a nice wedding in, uh, well, maybe a year or two? I don't think so, Dad. She's afraid her dad will try and break us up again. She thinks... We think that we ought to just up and elope. Are you quite sure Polly isn't just trying to move out of a home where she hasn't been too happy? We face that too, Dad. The answer is yes, that's part of it. But not all of it. Right. Well, sure, she said, let's elope lots of times, and I never really paid any attention. The thing that knocked me out was, uh, I really liked the idea. Dad, I'm going to say something that sounds pretty dumb. I love her. I'm sure you do, Chip. Dad, will you give me permission to get married? Chip, I want you to think... Will you, Dad? That's what you really want, Chip. A written permission? All right. Notarized? Notarized? Yeah, I checked into it. It's got to be notarized. Okay. But, Chip, before you do anything as sudden as eloping, I want you to do one thing. A what? Talk to her father. Uh, Dad, I... Now, no, wait a minute. Simply find out how he feels about an early wedding, say, in a year or two. Maybe you'll find out he doesn't mind. He'll mind, Dad. Well, let's put it this way. I'd hate to be a father who wasn't even consulted and found that somebody had taken my daughter out of my home. I think he's entitled to more consideration than that, don't you? Chip? 
Thanks. My mouth keeps getting kind of dry. <laughs> Mr. Williams should be home any minute. Oh, where's Pauline? She has a late chem lab on Fridays. Oh, that's... that's right. I forgot. Hello, Tom. Uh, Chip Douglas is here to talk to us. That's fine. I'd like to talk to him, too. Uh, sir, I... Sit I... down, Richard. Uh, Tom. Uh, maybe you better sit down, too. Tom, really, can't this wait? I mean, Chip's here to talk to us about something he feels is important. Yeah, well, this is important, too, Margaret. You'll find this interesting, Richard. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, perhaps you'd like to know how some of your daughter's homework time was spent, Margaret. Listen to this. Tuesday last, subject left campus in the company of young man known as R.D. at 314. At 3.23, subject and R.D. entered the honeycomb refreshment stand. At 5.05, subject accompanied R.D. to his home, where she did not reappear until 10.10. Oh, no, Tom. Oh, yes, Margaret. You were the one who had us followed. Sit down, Richard. No, I won't sit down. You scared your daughter half to death. You know that, Mr. Williams? Tom, do you mean you actually had your own daughter followed? N now, hold it, both of you. Man, do I feel sorry for you, Mr. Williams. And am I proud of my father? Richard! Richard, don't come back! I think Chip said it just right. Man, do I feel sorry for you. Where's Uncle Charlie? Uncle Charlie's in his bedroom asleep. Oh. Uh, Dodie, get me something to write on. I gotta leave a note for Mom and Dad. Okay. Is Purple okay? Yeah, anything's fine. You going someplace? Yeah, I'm going someplace. Give this to Dad when he comes to tuck in tonight, okay? Okay. Sure. I'll see you later. Don't forget to give Dad that note. Boy, it'll sure be neat when I learn to read something besides printing. <laughs> I must mean Dad and Mom. He was obviously in a hurry. Polly and I are eloping. Came to talk to you, but you were gone. Don't worry, love, Chip. Don't worry. Well, Mr. Williams must have thrown a tantrum. Steve, what are we going to do? Well, in the first place, I wouldn't know where to start looking for them. So I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're, we're going to brush our teeth as usual, and there were... Going to go to bed as usual, and, uh, and we'll lie there and worry. Like we did in the movie. <laughs>
all watching Vertivision, the incredible TV land program. Coming up next, it's the White Shadow, right here on the one network that puts TV first. Williams. Steve, it's four o'clock in the morning. Yes, I, I know it is. Well, where is she? I looked in her room. She didn't come home. Is it Chip? Uh, no, it's Polly's father. Uh, uh, then uh, Polly didn't leave you a note. A note? What note? Well, uh, Tom, I'm afraid they've eloped. Eloped? Well, yes. You see... I'll be right over. Oh, now, wait a minute, Tom. I... He's coming over. Well, call him back. Honey, I think the least we can do for the father of a daughter who's just eloped with our son is to listen to him. <laughs> can I see that note again, Steve? How do you like that, Margaret? They get a note and we don't. You raise a girl, you give her a nice home, you try to give her the right values, and what happens? She runs off with the first kid that comes along. I wouldn't exactly call Chip the first kid who came along, Mr. Williams. I'm sorry, I'm not choosing my words too carefully this morning. How do you like it, Margaret? They get a note, and we don't. That's hardly the point, is it, Tom? She's gone. But it's simple. It's simple. We'll have it annulled. Now, where did they go? I have no idea where they went, Tom. And I don't think it'd be too smart to have the marriage annulled. Not too smart, huh? Well, it's not your daughter who ran away with the first... Look, my daughter is gone! She's only 18 years old. She's too young to be married. I'm going to have the thing annulled. I don't agree with you. I had a long talk with Chip. You and your boy had a nice, cozy little chat about how he would run off with my daughter. Is that it, Steve? We talked, and I gave him my permission. You gave him your permission? Notarized. And I told him to go and talk to you about it before he did anything. Which he did. Now, Margaret, you stay out of this, please. No, Tom. Chip came over to talk to you, but you wouldn't let him. Margaret, I am trying to settle your daughter's future. You did. You settled it the minute you told Chip you had them followed. Uh, look, a father, a father does these things, Steve. Now, don't try to make me feel guilty. I'm still in charge of my daughter's welfare. You can make this thing legal for Chip, but Polly's only 18 and she still needs parental permission to be married. Now, whether you like it or not, I'm gonna have that thing annulled. No, Tom. No, what do you mean, no? Why not? Because I gave her my permission. Notarized. Your daughter's a married woman, Tom. Face it. And may I say something else? I couldn't have found a better son-in-law if I'd gone out and picked him myself. Thank you. We feel the same way about Polly. They're both bright kids, Tom. They'll do just fine. And now they have two families to fall back on. Mr. Williams? Tom? He just can't believe that his wife could have done a thing like this to him. Well, she did it because she loves you. Tom, you were destroying yourself with the idea of losing Polly. You were also destroying Polly. And me. Maybe now we can start over again, hmm? Come on, darling. Let's go home. Probably still say those kids are going to do just fine. Uh, maybe. It'll take a little time for me to get used to the idea. How do grandchildren strike you? Look, I'm too young for grandchildren. I'm only... <laughs> <laughs> 
and she's too young to be a grandmother. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Don't change too suddenly. I don't think I could stand it. Good night, Barbara. Good, Good night, night, Steve. Good night. <laughs> Darling, this was a night I wouldn't care to repeat. <laughs> oh, honey, I want to tell you that you showed admirable restraint. Now, anybody else would have, uh, oh, how does Charlie put it, uh, belted him in the mouth. <laughs> you know, darling, uh, a terrible thought just occurred to me. What's that? I think Williams and I are now related. <laughs> I think the car's fixed. We better get going. I must have fallen asleep. You had a right to, honey. You kids really married? You look like you should be going to a history class or something. Well, we still go to school, but we really are married. It's our marriage license, see? I'm such a mess. You look great. Man, I'm afraid to ask him how much he's going to charge us. It's for real, all right. Congratulations. Uh, thanks. How much do we owe you? Well, let's see. Parts, labor. How does ten bucks strike you? Ten bucks? Well, I happen to have the parts around here. Uh, old junk I've been trying to get rid of. Why, well, you've done me a favor taking it off my hands. It's a wedding present, Chip, isn't it? Well, I got a little gal at the house like you. Of course, she's a little bit younger than you are, but... Well, anyway, she's in a spot like this. I... Oh, I... How could you call it a wedding present when I'm charging you ten bucks for it? Well, you kids better get going. You got a long drive ahead of you in Mexico. Thanks a lot. <laughs> You're welcome. they are now? Well, the way I figure it, they should just about be getting to Mexico. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Chip Douglas. How does it feel to have another married son? Well, I guess I should be getting used to it by now, but uh, somehow it's different with Chip. Honey, tell me what he was like when he was little. Well, of course, he had some bad moments, but uh, he was a pretty good boy. I oh, sure he was. I was just remembering his first encounter with a girl. It was a disaster. <laughs> what was her name? Uh, Doris, Dora, Doreen, Doreen, uh, I can't remember her last name, but anyway, she called Chip up on the phone. And his brothers were really giving him a bad time. Wait a minute. Chip, uh, who was the girl on the phone just now? Nobody. What do you mean nobody? She must have a name. Dump Doreen Peters. Doreen Peters, huh? You were sort of rude to her on the phone. What's the matter? Don't you like her? If she were a bug, it sure would be fun to step on her. What did she do? Beat you out of something or throw you out at first base or what? Worse than that, she she hangs around all the time, makes goof eyes at me. Goof eyes? Yeah, every time I turn around, she's looking straight at me with her clunky old eye. How do you mean? Like this. Goof eyes. Well, Chip, I think you ought to feel flattered. Sounds like this girl has a crush on you. No, she hasn't. She's in love with me. Don't she tell you that? Sure, she tells everybody. Last Valentine's Day, everybody gave each other a nickel Valentine. And she gave me a 50-cent one. 
Greater love has no woman. Huh? Oh, nothing. I can see you have a problem, Chip. You probably get embarrassed when she does these things in front of your friends. The guys call me Hot Lips Douglas. Hot Lips Douglas? Well, I don't think this is any reason to be unkind to Doreen. Yeah, but who wants to get married in the second grade? Well, she wants to get married, huh? Sure, if I hadn't kicked her in the knee a couple of times, we would have been married in the first grade. Well, Mr. and Mrs. Peters announced the marriage of their daughter, Goof Eyes, to Hot Lips Douglas. Well, I wonder where Hot Lips Douglas and his wife are now. Well, I imagine they're uh, somewhere below the border. <laughs> Chip? Andale, Angelita. Hi. Buenos días. Buenos días. Hay falta en el motor. Uh, get out the phrase book, honey. <laughs> Look up Falta. I took three years of Spanish in high school. Like, right now I'm nervous. Uh, mistake or wrong? Oh, yes, there's something's wrong with the motor. Uh, no, no tenemos gasolina. Ah, uh, hay gasolina muy lejos. I hope lejos doesn't mean far away. If it does, we're in big trouble. <laughs> lejos, distant, far away. <laughs> we're in big trouble. <laughs> She says, muchas gracias, Paco. Here's a little something for you. No, Chip. Somos amigos, ¿verdad? Amigos, sí. Pues, hasta luego. Buena suerte y vayan con Dios. What a wonderful man. Dad said it was real friendly around here. The whole place is just for couples on their honeymoons. I think from now on, everything's going to be okay. Come on. Can we leave the car here? Well, Dad said to ask for Peppy, and he'd take care of everything. You like it? I love it. And I think you're right. Everything's going to be okay from now on. Come on. Is it true? Holly and Chip alone? Yeah. Charlie, you ought to have a broadcasting license. <laughs> well, if it was up to you, nobody would ever find out anything. <laughs> Why, are they trying to keep it a secret? No, as a matter of fact, Barbara tried to call you kids and tell you, but, uh, well, you weren't home. Then it is true. It isn't what you'd call a classical elopement. Uh, I mean, Chip talked to me about it, and Polly's mother gave her permission. Well, then they must have eloped because of Polly's father. Yeah, old Poison Pete. <laughs> Chip married my little brother. Chip is now a married man on his honeymoon in Puerto Munoz. Oh, my name is Douglas. Oh, fine. Fine. You will sign here, please. My father told us about this place. Oh, he say nice things? Oh, yes. He and Chip's mother just loved it here. Oh, these are welcome words, senorita. You will sign here, por favor. I sign for both of us. Oh, no, senor. No, you see, here everybody must sign to himself. Miguelito, el señor cuarto uno tres tres y la señorita cuarto dos zero uno. Hey, wait a minute. We don't want separate rooms. We're married. Oh, but señor, this is now a single hotel. But we're married. And besides, my dad told us this was a honeymoon hotel. You even had a sign up. Oh, front. I quit change that sign as soon as our new policy is permanente. You see, senor, we are Betty Martin. Do they more people like to arrive as singles than as honeymooners? 
In this place we have the rooms on the left for the senoritas and the rooms on the right for the hombres. We find this to be a good arrangement. Any other hotels around here? Oh, honey, if I don't get some sleep pretty soon, I'm going to collapse right here on the floor. Okay, honey. Bye. My son, Miguelito, will see your suitcases, senor. Oh, hi. That's right. They told me I had a roommate. I'm Mike Wiggins. I'm Chip Douglas. This place is really heavy. Yeah, it sure is. You know, they told me this used to be a honeymoon hotel. Yeah, this is a better deal. I met a girl tonight who had knocked your hat off. She had long brown hair and satiny skin and brown eyes, and we danced till a little while ago over the Concha Azul. Did you ever hear of it? Yeah, my dad was here. He told me. She's from Philadelphia. Who? Well, the girl that I met. By the way, she's got a sister. You want me to set you up with her? No, that's okay. Okay. Oh, hi. Oh, I'm glad you came home. I just have to talk to somebody. I'm Polly Williams. Douglas. My husband and I were just married last night. Well, our car broke down. And it rained. And well, we walked for miles. When we got to the station, well, there's nobody there who could fix the car until the next day. And then we ran out of gas. We were pulled here by a donkey. And now we find out that this is a singles hotel. This is my wedding night. Have you ever heard of anything so awful in your life? Lo siento, pero no hablo ninguna palabra de inglés. You don't speak English. No. Do you want to care for the desayuno? Break the senor. Uh, I think I'll wait for my wife. See? Si? Oh, she come now, I think. Senora? Hi. Hi. Well, did you sleep okay? No. Did you? No. Oh, I tell to juke what I do. I break the rule. A break what rule? About single. In between the rooms for the senoritas and the rooms for the boys, there is a, oh, como se dice, a parlor, no? I guess I didn't notice it. Chance it is to separate the rooms from the boys and the rooms from the girls. Tonight I will make from this parlor one extra room for you. Oh, you are married. You must be together. Oh, man, thanks, Peppy. Oh, you're very nice, senor. Of course. Now, for breakfast, you will require... Uh, anything. Eggs, I guess. Eggs. Bueno. And because you are North Americanos, very little hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> to walk on the beach, eh, she? It was great. Oh, she, I have not yet entirely prepared for you your room. You the guy in charge here? See, si, senor. Well, I like your best room for me and my wife. Senor, this is a singles hotel. Singles? But we're married. Oh, I'm sorry, senor, but we now have the new rules. And I saw your ad in a travel magazine. It said Honeymoon Hotel. Oh, senor, that was a year old. And we've traveled hundreds of miles to get here. Uh, you see, we've been married for a few years, and um, well, we saw your ad and decided to come to a honeymoon atmosphere to kind of patch up. It's kind of a second honeymoon. I'm sure the man doesn't want to hear the story of our so life, good. Ruth. Are you telling me that nobody around here is married? 
We are. We are. Oh, there. Uh, Senor, I make the exception in this case only. If you can make one exception, you can make two. Now, where do we sign? This way, senor. Darling, I wish you'd forget you're a lawyer and stop patronizing people. I got us the room, didn't I? Promise me something. Okay. Stay like your father. Okay, I'll try. clothes in the same closet. We'd better. It's the only closet. Chip, you're about as romantic as a fish. I'm as romantic as the next guy, only I don't know all the words. Just say, Polly Douglas, the light of day blushes in your presence. The sun pales in your brilliance. The moon basks in the reflected glory of your smile. You know, if I had to say stuff like that, I'd show. <laughs> Where'd you learn it? English lit. Yeah. Well, while you were learning that, I was in woodshop making an end table. <laughs> you taste good. Will that do? Byron would have said it better, but I bet he was rotten at making end tables. <laughs> I'm gonna wash up. See ya. Tell me how the moments will move like a glacier until you see my face again. <laughs> yeah, like you said. <laughs> I know there was going to be this down the whole bathroom and I'd gone back home. Yeah. How long have you been married? Uh, not very long. We're on our honeymoon. <sighs> Enjoy while you can. How come? I've been married four years. Four. And out of those four years, I'd say I had maybe six good months. Wow. Right. I'm not saying it's Ruth's fault. Not all of it, anyway. A lot of it's mine, but... We just got married too young. Well, how old were you? Twenty. <laughs> Forget I ever said anything. Uh, but what happened? <sighs> Who knows? I'm the philosopher. But adding up the pluses and minuses, my advice to you would be to run for the hills before it's too late. Run for the hills. Yeah. Flee for your life, man. Because once you settle down, then the arguments start. And the, the misunderstandings and the selfishness. Whew. I make a lot of money now. You know why? Because I couldn't stand to stay home and argue. I went out and I worked. And I made a bundle. And Ruth and I share nothing. Except a bank account. Don't you love her? I don't know why I dragged that word into it. I mean... Who has time to find out? Well, wouldn't you miss her if she were gone? I mean, well, suppose you got in an accident or something and you didn't have her anymore. I don't have that kind of luck. My dad says every time he gets hacked at somebody in the family, he wonders what it would be like if they weren't there anymore. Mm. That may be fine for you and your dad. Now with me, run for the hills. Yes, honey. But why should that older man make such an impression on you? He's not that much older. And he said that out of four years of marriage, he's only been happy about six months. Sure, but he doesn't have a wife like me. What else did he say? He said that he was too young to get married. And he was 20. Maybe your dad was right. Here we are married. We only got our driver's license two years ago. Chip. Yeah? Did it ever occur to you that maybe he was just plain wrong? You're right. He's just plain wrong. She! She! Why you did not tell to me that you are the son of Senor Douglas? 
I thought I did. Oh, perhaps, but my head did not receive the message. Only now, when this champagne arrived, with a note from your papa, do I know. What does the note say, Pepe? He's saying, Dear Pepe, tell my son and my daughter-in-law that we hope they will be as happy in your hotel as we were a year ago. Oh, she... I feel this, and tonight I bring to the Concha Azul. And you, sheep, you will dance with your pride. Thank you, Pepe. De nada. There he is, the teenage philosopher. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi. Some thanks are in order. You know, I'd like to call you something else besides kids. We're not that much older than you are. This is my wife, Polly, and I'm Chip Douglas. Hi. You know, you really started something last night, Chip. I did. Yes, you did more for us last night than you can possibly imagine. You said something in your speech last night that really jarred me. I wish I knew what it was. Well, you were quoting your dad. You said, what would I do if Ruth wasn't around for me to yell at? That finally got through. It's such a simple thing. Yeah, well, it may not change this moth into a butterfly overnight, but I'm going to work at it. Um, would you like to join us for breakfast? That sounds really nice. I'll pull up a chair. Yeah. Well, my dad sent us a bottle of champagne. Pepe's going to serve it tonight to anybody who's old enough to drink at the Concha Azul. Would you like to join us? That touches me, Chip. That really does. Okay, honey? Sure. <laughs> you go on in the kitchen, have Uncle Charlie fix you a sandwich. You don't suppose anything's happened to the children, do you? Uh, got to stop thinking of them as children. Uh, no. Uh, is Tom going to come by later? I don't think so. He, uh, he said the meeting would last all day. Maybe, uh... Maybe Chip had a flat tire, hmm? Why isn't Polly's father here? Well, he had to go to an important meeting, Dodie. He's missing my sign. Yeah, well, we'll tell him about it. Okay, Dodie, here you are. And uh, take a nap, then. Thank you, Daddy. You really think that William had a meeting, Steve? Yes. I mean, uh, you know, a guy should be here when his daughter gets back from a honeymoon. Well, Charlie, when a man tells me he has to go to an important meeting, I believe him. Well, do you want to know what I think? No. <laughs> Steve, you're the most frustrating man I ever met. <laughs> <laughs> Your mover. You know something? There are worried vibrations in this room. And nobody's worried. Chip and Polly didn't know we were going to give them a surprise welcome, so they just took their time. Took their time? What'd they do, come by the way of Arizona? <laughs> well, of course, that uh, car of Chip's could have broken down again. Think we ought to call the police or something? That's the dumbest thing I've heard all night. Now, what would the police do? California Highway Patrol? Well, this is Mrs. Stephen Douglas. Uh, I don't know your procedure, so I don't know if this is a silly question, but... Uh, yes. Well, my son and his uh, new wife are, are several hours overdue. They're supposed to uh, uh, be coming from a place called Puerto Munoz. Uh, yes, well, they were supposed to leave about 8 o'clock this morning. 
Laguna and went swimming. You went swimming? <laughs> well, you're home. That's the main thing. Where's Papa? Uh, he, uh, he had a very important meeting, honey. Well, let's not stand out here. Let's go in the other room where we can talk. Yeah, come on. Ernie, you want to be the father and Myrtle can be the baby? <laughs> This is no time to play house, Dodie. Go to sleep. Okay. Only I'll never get you to sleep in my bedroom again. Right. As soon as Chip and Polly move into the dorm, I get that room all to myself. <laughs> Man. Are you gonna need this football? Yeah. 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 The married guys at the dorm play ball while the girls make dinner. Well, Chipper, I uh, saw your car in the driveway with all your things in it. You're uh, moving out already. Yeah, we put in our reservations for the dorm before we got married and came through this morning. How about this softball? Yeah, I'll need that too. <laughs> well, uh, can I give you a hand? But no, thanks. This is the last of it. I'll just throw this junk in my car and take off. Now, come on, Art. I didn't hear you come home. All right. Oh, another one gone. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. One by one. Are hey, you going to need this? I guess you can have it. Oh, thanks. You hey, wait a minute. You don't play tennis. <laughs> well, I could trade it off for something I want. <laughs> Chip, uh, you could sleep in the dorm tonight? Yeah. At last you got the room all to yourself. Oh, I didn't mean that. What are you talking about? I don't know. It's kind of permanent. I mean, well, I don't need the room that bad. Hey, come on, Ern. <laughs> I guess it's kind of dumb to shake hands, huh? What's dumb about it? I guess I'll go say goodbye to Mom and Dad, Uncle Charlie and Dodie. And Tramp. And Tramp. You forgot these, Chip. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks, Dad. He's gonna ball in a minute. <sighs> Me too. <sighs> well? We won't say goodbye, Chip. You're not gonna be that far away. I should say not. Oh, I'll tell Charlie and Dodie you've left, and you better get going before I shed those female tears that women are so famous for. We'll call you guys as soon as we get a phone in. And Polly wants to have you over for dinner. Good. See ya. Here, bring it over and we'll play sometime, okay? <laughs> look, darling, I got the grapes up all by myself. Oh, they look great. Oh, and another thing, the phone was never disconnected, and so all I had to do was call the phone company. Listen. Man. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Do you want to carry me over the threshold? You believe in that, Jess? Not really. For some reason, I'd like to be carried over my new threshold. Okay, come on.
There you go. Feel better? No, because if I felt any better, I'd bust. Oh, our first phone call. Who knows the number? My mother. I called her first thing. Hi, Mama. Because you're the only one who knows the number. Chip hasn't even had a chance to call his parents yet. What did Papa say when you told him about the dorm? He hasn't? Well, anyway, tell him that I want the two of you to come over for dinner as soon as I learn to cook something. You better invite him over sooner than that. <laughs> Chip's so funny. Did you hear what he just said? <laughs> yes, honey. He's a wonderful boy, and I'm so glad you're so happy. Fine, dear. Yeah, well, I I'll call you tomorrow, hmm? Oh, I'm sure your father will call, too. Okay. Bye-bye. Tom, how long do you think I can go on lying to Polly? I didn't ask you to lie, Margaret. Why don't you tell her the truth? Oh, no. The person who tells Polly she's being rejected by her father is going to be her father. It's lined with cedar to take care of the moths and everything. Mm, it's oh, nice. Good. Yeah. And thanks a lot for the TV, Mom and Dad. I don't know what we'd ever do without it. Well, we just thought it would come in handy. You know, why don't you sit down on the couch? I think that's the best place. We think it's pretty comfortable for something that turns into a bed. Yeah, it is. Well, Polly put up the drapes herself. Oh, well, uh, I'd say you did a very good job, Polly. It was that first day that Chip was moving his stuff from the house. I thought, well, why don't I put the drapes up myself and surprise him? So I did, and he was. <laughs> Well, it's a very comfortable place. Well, it's kind of small, but there's just the two of us. Hey, did I show you the refrigerator? Oh, oh. oh let's see that. <laughs> it's a built-in. All the dorms have them. <laughs> and is it handy, huh, Polly? Yeah, it's really cool. Well, the minute it stops being cool, we'll have it fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Chips is the funniest things, you know that? <laughs> Maybe we better eat. Okay, well, it sure isn't much, but it's a thought that counts. Can I help you, honey? Oh, no, thanks. Why don't you just sit down? Okay, where do you want us, Polly? Well, Dad, you can go right there, I guess. All right. Mom? Yeah, I'll get okay. Thank you, honey. Huh? Well, oh, hey. solid, huh? Oh. Got out of the machine on campus. And don't tell her how good the chicken is, because all she did was heat it up. Oh. <laughs> here. Um, here. What do you want, uh, white or dark, Polly? I'll help you. Oh, either one is fine. She forgot to take the plastic off the salad. Oh, oh. sweet. Do you Look, want I coffee? Get it, uh, now or later, coffee. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll have coffee later. without dessert? Oh, you know, I think I forgot dessert. Oh, well, we don't eat dessert anyway. We're on a diet. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, now may I offer a toast? Does it work without wine? It works better without wine. To Polly and Chip, may they always be as happy as they are right now. <laughs> <laughs> Well, your, your grapes are down. <laughs> what a tiny little room. I don't think I've ever seen so much happiness in such a small room. I think I'd have been a self-conscious mess under the same conditions at the same age. Me too. I'd probably have had my bride take the cellophane off the salads and uh, pretend that she'd cooked the chicken. And, uh, but I would have been wrong. Steve, has Polly's father called them yet? No. Chip says he hasn't. I wonder why. I'll tell you why, Margaret. Because you don't encourage defiance. You don't tell young people that they will be rewarded if they hurt you. Now, she knew exactly how I felt, but she indulged herself. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to go to sleep. Tom, I'd like to ask you something. Do you love her? I thought that might be what you would say, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer your question with a question. Does she love me? Hey, man, wow, honey. 
everything okay now? Yeah. Uh, what's wrong? Everything went great tonight. I know. Well, even when the drapes fell down, nobody cared. I know. Well, my folks didn't mind the machine salad or the store-bought chicken. I know. Well, then what's tearing you up? Your folks are so great. Your mom's great, too. And so's your dad. I wish Papa would come to see me. Chip's here. Oh, hello, Chip. You come in the back way, did you? Chip's been here for some time, dear. He didn't want to disturb you while you were working. Oh, fine. Sit, sit down, Chip. Sit down. Yeah. Yeah, well, how's, uh, how's Pauline? She's fine, Mr. Williams. That's yeah, what... I understand that uh, you two uh, went out of state to get married and went to Mexico on your honeymoon. Yeah, we... Yeah, it's a beautiful country, Mexico. Warm people. I was there once in 1939. This other fellow and I uh, bought a 32 convertible for $20. Took off down the Pan American Highway. Tom, I don't think Chip came over to talk about your trip to Mexico. Margaret, I'm just trying to set everybody at ease. We certainly don't want to shout at one another, do we, Chip? Uh, no, sir. See, Margaret, uh, Chip is a college man with a wife. He knows these things. All right, we'll get to the subject, uh, Chip. You explained to Pauline that I'm, uh, I'm not cutting her out of my life. Nothing dramatic like that. You're not? No, you see, uh, Chip, she hurt me. You both hurt me, for that matter. I'm simply waiting for the wound to heal. Oh, my. Now, my love, my love, which I have given so freely, has been turned aside. She thinks you don't love her, Mr. Williams. I love her, Chip. I, I told you that. It's not a question of that. It's a question of who loves who. Don't you agree? I don't know what you mean. All right, you, you tell Pauline this. You tell Pauline that, uh, that her papa loves her, of course. But he wants her to know how hurt he is. Don't you miss her? Of course I miss her. That isn't the point. Look, you're, you're probably thinking I'm a very selfish man. Well, you, you think in a different direction, son. You ask yourself, who is the most selfish? Now, you ask yourself that question and see if you don't come up with a different answer. Sometimes she cries at night, Mr. Williams. Hey, well, thank you for coming by, Chip. You, uh... You explain everything to Pauline. Okay, Mr. Williams. Bye, Mom. Good night, Jim. That boy called you a terrible name just now. Margaret, we had a very unemotional talk. What terrible name? Your son-in-law called you Mr. Williams. Polly. You know something, Chip? We have a perfect life. <laughs> yeah, we do. Except for one thing. <sighs> Polly, that's what I want to talk to you about. You've got to quit worrying about your dad. Well, it's okay. I'm making the adjustment. What kind of an adjustment? Well, I'm facing all the facts. Your parents like me. My mother likes me. Your brothers and Uncle Charlie like me. Even Tramp likes me. Seven out of eight's not so bad. <laughs> but your dad likes you, too. He loves you, honest. You're sweet, darling. I'm going to go to sleep, okay? I can have to keep my eyes open. There's something I better tell you. Well, that's weird. It's kind of late for callers. 
Mr. Williams. Uh, hello, Richard. Papa. Hello, Pauline. Uh, no need. My car broke down about a block from here, and I remembered your mother said this is where you lived. Yeah, this is it. And I thought maybe I might use your phone to call the automobile club. Well, oh, sure, sure. Come on in. Thank you. We were just doing a little studying. See? How's Mama? Hmm? Oh, your mother, your mother is, uh, your mother's good under all conditions, you know. Me, I'm, uh, I'm not so lucky. This is it, huh? This is the whole thing. Well, it's just a dorm, Papa. But we've got everything we need. The refrigerator's built in. And it's got a Pullman stove with a little dinky oven and everything. Yeah, but just the same, I, uh... I see you unpacked everything. Yeah, just about. Uh, you said you want to use the phone, Mr. Williams? Thank you. I... I... <laughs> the number I... My car didn't break down. Oh, Papa. I missed you so much. Me too, Kenny. Me too. Chip. Yeah, Mr. Williams? Chip, do you think you could call me something besides Mr. Williams? I'll sure work on it, Mr. Williams. I, I mean, Dad. Sure is dead up there. Uh, uh, where? Upstairs. Nothing happens. <laughs> well, anybody care for dinner? Okay, honey. Hey, are we in time to eat? Sure. Hey, sure. Oh, 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 well, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? Hi, 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 Okay, if somebody doesn't get in here and eat this dinner, I'm going to throw the whole thing out 